Hello, welcome to LTHS Physics. Uh, this is, we're going to do an example of uh, using work energy considerations to study the motion of an object uh, sliding up an incline uh, when friction is present. So, um, the example looks something like this. Let's say we got an incline at an angle theta uh, to the horizontal. You've got a block. It's got a mass m. Uh, we'll give you numbers for this, this example, too. And the block is moving up the hill, so we put the swish shines behind it. It's moving up the hill, and eventually it's going to come to rest. Okay. Um, now, uh, we're going to try to figure out well, how far is the slide uh, before coming to rest uh, using work energy considerations. So, some, things, uh, some numbers that we're going to use, uh, theta, we'll, we'll use the ubiquitous 30 degrees. Uh, the mass is 5 kilograms. The initial kinetic energy, starting kinetic energy, is 20 joules. And the coefficient of sliding friction between the surface and the block is 0.3. So we're going to find we're going to find two things. First, we're going to find how long the thing or how far the thing goes before it stops. The other thing we're going to find, and I'll write this down later, is we're going to find the power being delivered to the block by gravity and friction at the, this moment, the, start, the moment that we start the problem, when the kinetic energy is 20 joules. But we'll do that part later. Let's go ahead and do the distance part first. So I want to know how far, what distance does the block slide before it comes to rest? Well, like any problem with multiple forces, we're going to draw an FBD. All right, and we're going to actually draw two of them. So here's our college board FBD. Uh, the forces acting on the block are gravity, normal, and then it's sliding up the hill, and there's friction. So friction is opposing that relative motion. There you go, force of friction kinetic. Now, like with all of our other problems, we're going to split our forces up into perpendicular to the motion and parallel to the motion. Okay. F bends perpendicular, F S parallel. This guy we got to split up like normal. So I'll redraw this in component form. F bends all good. F F is all good. This component of gravity is M G cosine of the angle, and this component of gravity is M G sine of the angle. Okay, so. Um, Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find all those numbers because I've got numbers here. I might as well find them. All right. So if you do this, uh, mg cosine theta. So you take five times nine point eight, which is forty nine, times cosine thirty, and you get forty two point four. If you do mg sine theta, no calculator necessary. Uh, five times nine point eight is forty nine. Sine of thirty is a half. Half of forty nine is twenty four and a half. Because the block is not accelerating this way, it's not jumping off the incline or crashing through the incline, Fn has to equal mg cosine theta, so that's 42.4. And friction, that one I'll write down. I'll kind of write it down over here. Force of friction is mu sub k Fn. Well, it's just 0.3 times 42.4. And if you do that, you get about 12.7. .7. So we got all our forces, OK? <laughs> now, uh, to figure out uh, how far up the incline goes, we're going to use the work energy principle. So work energy principle looks like this. Net work is change in kinetic energy, OK? Now, we got to be careful. Net work and change in. So first of all, change in means kinetic energy final minus kinetic energy initial. Okay. Since the block is stopping, it's going to be at rest over here. Kinetic energy final is just zero. K naught, I know, I was given that, it's 20. Okay. The net work, well that's going to be the work done by friction and the work done by this component of gravity. The normal force and this component of gravity don't do any work because they are both perpendicular to the motion. So all I have to worry about is these two guys. The motion is up 
the hill. Both friction and mg sine theta oppose that motion. They're both pointing in the opposite direction of that motion. So they're both doing negative work. Okay? So the network is going to be the work done by the force of friction plus the work done by the force of gravity. And that's going to equal 0 minus 20. Both these terms are going to be negative because they're both forces are doing negative work. And it's very simple. The work done by the force of friction will be negative 12.7 times d, which I don't know. So negative 12.7d plus work done by this component of gravity, that's the one that's parallel to the motion, is negative 24 and a half times our unknown d. That all equals negative 20. Well, next algebraic step, we, get, we can divide everything by negative 1, and you got that. Combine like terms, if you combine like terms, you get 37.2. D equals 20, and you've got your answer. D is 20 divided by 37.2, and you get D equals about 0.54 meters. So not that far. Only half a meter, that's only about that far, so, okay? So that's how far the block goes uh, before it stops. Now, the other two things we want to find is I want to find at this moment here, at the beginning of the problem, when the kinetic energy was 20 joules, what power was being delivered to the block by friction and by gravity. Okay, so friction and gravity. So if you want the, if you want the power at that moment, you're looking at instantaneous power. The equation for instantaneous power is force dot velocity. Okay. Now, uh, we know each force. The, work, the force of friction is 12.7. The force of gravity that's doing work is 24 and a half. They're both pointing the opposite direction of the motion, so they're both going to have negative power. They're both going to drain power from the crate, is one way to look at it. Um, and uh, we, what we need to know is what is the velocity at that moment? Well, we know the kinetic energy is 20 joules, and we know the equation for kinetic energy is 1 half m e squared. So if I solve that for v, I got all those numbers. I can find v right away. It's 2 times 20 over 5, which is root 8. So your velocity is about uh, 2.83. Okay, now they, did, they didn't ask for that specifically in the problem, but you need that to answer the questions. All right, so the power being delivered by the force of friction is equal to the force of friction, which is negative 12.7, it's in the opposite direction of the motion, times our velocity, which I'll write root 8 there, but we also know that's about 2.83. If you do the math, you get negative uh, 35.9. Watts. Now, uh, what's the negative telling us? That means at that moment, uh, friction is taking 35.9 joules per second, a watt is a joule per second, away from the crate, okay, at, you know, at that moment. So it's taking energy out. So the crate had 20 joules of kinetic energy, but friction's taking that away, okay? In addition, gravity is also taking energy away, and it's very similar. Power by gravity is negative 24.5 times the distance. And for that one, you get a bigger number, negative 69.3 watts. So same thing, it's also negative because gravity is also taking that energy away at this rate. Now, what each force is doing with that energy is different. Gravity is converting the energy from kinetic energy into potential energy. So this this 69.3 joules per second is turning into potential energy, energy of position, or in this case, energy of height. Friction, on the other hand, that's a non-conservative force, which we'll talk about. That's taking the energy and turning it into something that's not mechanical, in this case, heat. So it's changing mechanical energy in the crate into heat, and that heat is dissipated along the surface of the crate and the surface of the incline. So what each force is doing in energy is different, but both of them are taking energy away from the crate as the crate flies up the incline. So that's an example of, of using work energy considerations to look at the motion of an object 
um, with, uh, with friction up an incline. So thank you very much.